stop understanding. Now, number five. We're getting into the top five, and these games really impressed me beyond belief for 2013. Number five is Zelda A Link Between Worlds. Now, I love Zelda games, especially the classic ones. This one brought me back to how I felt when I played the classic Zelda game. Top down bird's eye view in the game. The graphics are phenomenal, especially in 3D. The story is actually very good and very well put together as well. And I love the fact that you have so much freedom in this game. You can choose which, du which dungeon you want to go to in whatever order you want. You're not stuck between, oh, I can't go to this dungeon yet because I have to go to this one, this one, and then that one before I can get to this dungeon. No, you can go to whichever one and whichever order you want to go to before finally going to the final one. Now, this game seems like it's perfect and it would be higher on the list. Except that, you know, the games that's above it did do above and beyond what I ever thought it would do. The only thing I don't like about this game is at a point very early on in the game you get all of this equipment that seems like it would be the type of equipment in traditional Zelda games you would have to earn to get by going through certain places and beating certain mini bosses or going through certain puzzles to acquire these special equipment but they just throw it at you for free saying hey here you go you didn't earn it but there you know have at it which i understand they wanted you know people to have a lot of freedom so they want to just give you a whole bunch of equipment to have it but i kind of miss having that challenge to unlock something that i needed to get to a certain place now i understand there are some equipment that you do have to earn to get like the sand rod for example so please don't get me wrong I do know that there are some equipment you have to earn yet. It's just that I wish that all the other ones they would make you earn to get those as well. Now number four on the list, I love this game and I'm so happy Sony is doing something special with it this month. And it is Bioshock Infinite. Oh my gosh, Bioshock Infinite. I cannot sing its praises enough. The game is beautiful. The story is amazing the gameplay is fluid it's a lot of times it's just in your face the fights aren't aren't as repetitive as I thought it was going to be at first at first with the first hour or so maybe two hours of the game it starts to feel repetitive until you start seeing more different enemies and you start getting different types of abilities and you go through different scenery where you have to go through different ways of beating enemies and you encounter newer enemies that keep getting harder and harder to beat. I love that. It just makes every encounter a little bit newer and a little bit more challenging at the same time. Um, the music, I actually really dug the music on this. The music was great. And I, the presentation was beautiful. I, I love the game. Now. What I mentioned before about the what Sony's doing with the game, if you have a PlayStation Plus membership, Sony is putting Bioshock Infinite up for anyone to download completely for free. The full game, not a demo, not a time demo. You get the entire game for free. You don't have to pay a cent if you're already a PlayStation Plus member and you keep that game for as long as you're a PlayStation Plus member. I don't see Xbox One or Xbox 360, I don't see their stores doing anything like that that's that awesome for a game that current. I don't know. I mean, the game did come out this year. I don't see them doing that. I'm just gonna leave it at that, but trust me, if you are a PlayStation Plus member, what are you doing? If you don't have this game, it's going to be free within the next week or so. And if you're not going to pick it up, why do you even have PlayStation Plus? Seriously. 
now for number three, this game I am literally addicted to. I will openly admit it, I am addicted to this game. It is probably the best MMO I personally have ever played in my life. And it is Final Fantasy XIV A Realm Reborn. Now they just recently gave the 2.1 um, update to the game which was a realm awoken and it was great it's still great this game you, they offer you multiple different types of job classes and jobs that you can just go through and just own so many different types of monsters and bosses I mean you have warriors summoners mages you you even have Dragoons, and the game is just phenomenal. You have to try it yourself. They've added more dungeons. They've added hard modes to dungeons. You can fight the primal summons that people have loved using for years of Final Fantasy, like Ifrit, um, Bahamut. You can, you can even fight a giant Moogle that is a king. The little cute Moogles, you fight those things in a special, um, in a special fight. And it, it's just, there's so much stuff in there that I would have to make an entire separate video to talk about. But the fact of the matter is, if you're looking for a good MMO that is challenging, that has great fight mechanics, you can even act. You can actively dodge certain enemies' abilities, or you can actively interrupt them as well. Um, if you're looking for a great MMO like that, and yes, it is a paid MMO, but at the same time, it's worth every penny. You can't go wrong with Final Fantasy XIV. As for PC and PS3, and don't worry if you have a friend that has it for the console and you have it for the PC you will still be able to play on the same servers because it is cross-platform. Well, cross-platform with PC and PS3. I'm sorry, Xbox fans, but the game is not coming to you. Now, we're getting to the top two. And uh, I will say this. I, I had a real hard time deciding with these two, and I know there's going to be a lot of people hating me, some people are probably going to try to threaten my life over this, like a lot of them did in, uh, you know, to IGN and some of their reviewers, but at the same time, I don't care. Um, you probably already know what I'm going to pick is number two after I said that. But number two, they definitely deserved to earn this. It has to go to Grand Theft Auto V. Now, I know... Get the thought of five fanboys that are hating me right now. I'm sorry. But there's only some tiny things that knock this down to number two. But it definitely deserved to be up there. Now, Get the Thought of Five has a very impressive storyline, great presentation. They have great music along on their radio. They have great cars. The graphics look beautiful in this game. The voice actors are phenomenal. They, they are just, they're just great voice actors. When Trevor is pissed, you can feel this guy is pissed off. <laughs> I, mean, it, I mean, when he goes psycho, you are literally afraid for everyone else. Even though you're controlling the psycho, you're afraid for everybody else. That's how great some of the voice acting is. When it can actually make you feel something, that's so you know you have a great voice actor in the game. The mechanics were great. Some of the car handling was an issue with some cars, but at the same time, I liked that because it showed that they paid attention to the fact that not all cars handle the same. Now, the online play, this is where the game lost its number one spot, in my opinion. The online game had huge huge disappointments when it first came around to the point where it was literally unplayable for a, I, about the first month that it was 
announced and not announced but the first month it was introduced now you would think that since rockstar waited an extra month after the release of its game to release its online feature that it would be polished and these things would be changed and fixed and there'd be no problem but as soon as it came out it had huge problems and i know some of it was due to a lot of people trying to get in the game at the same time but then there was other issues on top of that now there's still bugs and glitches in the game especially some of the bugs that happen in story mode that even i encountered and some of my friends did as well that caused them to have to revert to an older save file and if you didn't have an older save file you ran to our problems you had to start the game over now from what i understand rockstar has addressed these issues and they have fixed it it's just the fact that there are still a lot of bugs in the game which i will forgive it because every grand theft auto always had a glitch that we all forgave and laughed about but still it stands that it does have quite a few bumps and glitches along the way of the game but it doesn't take away the fact that if you have a, a, a good console like 360 ps3 you need to get this game you really do now number one on this list is a game that i will always cherish and i beat it over and over again and i just love the hell out of it it's a story that actually made me care about the characters just as much or almost as much as I care for Clementine from the Walking Dead game last year. And it was The Last of Us. Oh my gosh. The voice act from the voice acting, from the presentation, music, graphics, game mechanics, online play, everything was above and beyond what I thought it ever could have become. I love the story. I love how Joel goes through this deep, dark depression for so many years and then comes out of it basically forced to take care of this other little girl and bring her across the country to try to find a cure. I love how this side character, Ellie, for a good two hours of the game, can be annoying, but she's meant to be annoying. She's meant to ask those annoying questions. She's meant to be afraid when you're killing somebody with a brick because it's part of her character development. And that's another thing. In this game, what this game had more than any other games in this entire list, that every, every other game here fell short on, at least a little bit, was character development. The character development in The Last of Us was so impactful that I couldn't help but have it at number one. You couldn't help but to feel the impact of the character development between Joel and Ellie. And let's not forget about the online play. The game mechanics from the single player also go into the online play when it comes to making your equipment like smoke bombs or just, you know, a normal grenade type of thing, like a nail bomb. Or just taking people out melee style, anything like that. Making shanks, finding certain things to kill people. It's great. It's fun. The connection is awesome. I haven't once seen major lag or major connection glitch in this game ever. It even connects itself to your own Facebook as well. So it kind of communicates with your own Facebook page if you have Facebook as well, which I also love that integration system with that. If you get this game, please get the season pass because it'll give you a 90 minute documentary on how this game was made, how Naughty Dog got this game and wanted it to be different than any other game out there and worked so hard to make this more than just a game but something that people will always remember. Well guys, that was my top 10 list of 2013 for gaming. 
Now, this is the first time I've ever done a top 10 list of anything or a top list of anything at all. So let me know in the comments if you agree with my list, if you think I should have added another game instead of one of the games I put in there. If you have your own top 10 or top 5 list 2013, put that in the comments as well. Let's have a discussion about it. I'll even respond to the comments as well. So guys, 2013 was a blast and I cannot wait for the games that's coming out this year alone for 2014. Because a lot of these games looks like it's going to be a great game, a great year for gaming.